Well, hey there, friendships. Welcome back to Curtis's Corner. If you're new here, hi, I'm Curtis. This is my corner. And on today's Movie Monday, we have an extra special interview today. We are going to be sitting down and chatting with Louis Santer. He is going to be portraying Tigger in the brand new film, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honeys in select theaters next Wednesday, March 26th. And it's going to be running from the 26th until the 28th. I am so excited for this film. I am excited for this interview and learning a lot of behind the scenes tidbits, spilling the tea, if you will, on this film. So if you are looking forward to hearing the questions that I ask, hearing what Lewis has to say about the film and his character of Tigger, then keep on watching. So before we jump into things, make sure you like this video if you like movie related content. I am post weekly here on this channel, along with hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video because if you don't hit it, how else are you gonna know? You won't, so you should probably do it. In the description box below as well, there is a link to my Patreon. For $1 a month, you get early access to all of my videos, the uncut editions, unedited editions of all of my videos, and you get creative control over what type of content that you would like to see, making suggestions of maybe who I should interview or what kind of movies I should review or what kind of movie content you wanna see, or even makeup content if you're interested in that. So please show your support, click that link, join the Patreon. But without further ado, let's jump into this interview with Louis Santer. Thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to come and sit down and have a little chat and talk okay. about all the fun things about your new movie. Mm -hmm. but before we start anything, are you able to kind of tell everyone a little bit about yourself and like what yeah. made you want to pursue acting? So I started, so I've always sort of like performing since I've been like really young. And then when I was 11 years old, I, for some reason, just went through like a quite a big role in like a sort of local production, local theater production. And it's quite a big role. And I just loved it. I think I just, even at 11 years old, it's like a drug. Do you know what I mean? That feeling of being on stage. There's a comedy, so people sort of laugh and I was obviously very young but I still remember it really well and thinking it is like just chasing that drug and then once I did that show I was like this is something I want to do so I did it at school just doing like lessons at school and then did it at college and I did like sort of outside of school classes and stuff and then once I left college went to drama school and did a year of just like acting that then I went on to do three years of acting and stage combat um, because I thought like a like it's quite a niche market sort of stage combat so sort of add like another string to your bow did that and then obviously graduated from drama school last July and then yeah it's just been a crazy whirlwind ever since I've graduated really I've been very grateful like, I've been very busy with all sorts of like the jobs including this one so yeah it's just been it's just been a crazy whirlwind since I graduated really but it all sort of started I'd say in 2011 when I was 11 yeah. wow so like just like it's just been go 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 the entire time then. since I graduated yeah it's been like the last year it's been crazy yeah nice so before we kind of jump really into talking about Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 I like to just kind of do a few little warm-up questions just to kind of get everyone comfortable ready to go. So what is the strangest or most unexpected interaction that you've had with someone, be it like a fan or someone else in the industry? Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. In the industry. Oh, God. Um, That's great. That's a good question. The fan, I would say I, so I was doing, I was working at a, a bar part time for a little while um, and someone came in to the bar and they had a Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey t-shirt on and I, this is like, this is quite a while ago now when I just started sort of getting the characters like that and I was very like new to the industry and everything. And I remember saying to him, I was like, oh, it's like you found a Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey and then he was like quite a young lad and he was like, yeah, yeah, I love that. I said, well, I've just been, I think, God, I don't remember, it was last year sometime, so I might have already filmed some of it, you know, or maybe it was just before we started filming. There's definitely something going on, so it was like confirmed, there was stuff happening. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'll play Tigger in it, by the way. And I just remember his, his face being like, uh, what? And then like, almost like, Jenny's like, no, you're joking, like, you're joking. Like, <laughs> I'm from quite a small little town on the south coast of England. So like, you don't really hear about like a lot of like people in movies around here or nothing. That's not really a thing you hear about where I'm from. Um, so I remember telling him and he's like, just sort of looking at me like, you, you're crazy about being good fun. And then I was like, no, and I, I think I showed him IMDb or something like that or pictures on, on set, wherever, wherever I was at the time. I went, yeah, there's, there's proof there. And then he's like, oh my. and then I think he got a picture of me and I think I signed a little sign for him and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so that was, that was sort of the moment I thought, wow, 
wow, this film's actually... I'm new to it, do you know what I mean? So I graduated from drama school and I went on to do Shakespeare and stuff, nothing, nothing like this. And once you get into this kind of film, into this world, and you see someone with a t-shirt from the first film, you're like, it's crazy. So that was that was a moment I thought, yeah, this is this big, big sort of project I'm going into. Yeah, and like, are yeah. you like kind of getting like really recognized now that not, your name not, has kind of been put out there? Yeah, not so much. Not, like, I'm still, I've got like, more sort of people text me on like, Instagram and social media, obviously people sort of saying, you know, like they can see on social media, that kind of thing. But in terms of in person, I think it's still that whole thing of like, obviously I'm in prosthetics, so it's like, you know, people don't know what I look like and obviously it's recognizing that character and then you've really got to do your research into who's playing Tigger to sort of know that, oh, it's Luke Sands, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, for example, we had the premiere on Monday and I purposely wore this jacket to the, to the premiere got, and people were laughing about it. I said, well, I did it because I didn't want any confusion of like, I didn't want to go on the carpet and anyone to go, well, who, who does that guy play? Is it Tigger or do you know what I mean? Or, or yeah. I wanted like, if I thought we were a massive tiger jacket, it's like, oh, that's Tigger. <laughs> so that's, why, that's why I wore that jacket. And like, there was a couple, there was a couple fans at the premiere and like I signed DVD and stuff like the first film so it's still very but I love it like, I love it like even I'm the one it's like I'm getting really excited, as excited as the fan so I'm like, oh my god really like okay yeah yeah I'll sign it so I'm, I'm very getting new to that side of it and like conventions and stuff are coming up so I'm very excited for, like, to meet fans and stuff like that so yeah I love it I do love it but I think it's just starting do you know what I mean I think it's just yeah. starting yeah. Okay. nice so have you taken any mementos or props from the set so no I haven't I wish I could I really wish I could say that I did but I think so there was the, the, the costume I don't know what happened to this costume so I'm in like a straight jacket mm-hmm. that was just wrecked though. it was just cut it was literally covered in blood and it was so heavy of this this fake blood and it was sticky and it was blank. it just it was such a physical role but it was just covered in blood at all times that was just you know where that's going I probably just got dumped straight away um, but the mask was put on uh, I think I can say this but the mask was put on a mannequin head and I think it's been given to like someone I think one of the location managers or it's been sold at auction or something like that There's, they had a plan for I think Tigger's mask and young Winnie the Pooh I think it was like a good cause it was going to a good cause just okay but I remember seeing the mannequin head because I had to sign it so I signed the mannequin head uh, and I was like it was kind of gutting saying goodbye to it um, but yeah I guess you know maybe next time maybe next time I'll yeah I, I mean who knows like Halloween yeah. coming up and everything uh, yeah. you might have some Tigger masks going around <laughs> <laughs> it's all prosthetics for the things you could see on the mannequin because it was my head yeah it was the shoulders sort of thing and had like the chin there's like a chin piece and like uh, about four pieces of that head was also stuck in the mannequin but if they do like a full mask that'd be cool yeah but I'll be buying one myself yeah <laughs> <laughs> so if you weren't an actor and like you didn't yeah. do any like drama school or anything what do you think your career path would have been wow 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 wow. that's a really good question that's a really good question um honestly i think sometimes i get this thing of like if i wasn't an actor i thought this before i think i feel like acting such a a free sort of job anyway you're so free to do so much things with acting it's not like there's no wrong way you can do it really Mm -hmm. and it's like you could be traveling here then you're playing this character then this happens it's so like you know you don't know what your future looks like and i love that feeling i love that feeling of like i I could not do a job where it's like i know where i'm going to be in five years time i know what i mean i know what happens Mm -hmm. like i like that free spirit sort of thing so I think I'd honestly just be like like someone who travels <laughs> I know I could like, I'm quite sometimes envious of people like I know a few people like, a few of my friends just saved up money and they're just traveling and they're just like finding work on the way and they're just making up as they go along and there's something I think beautiful about that just being like oh I'm just traveling you know a continent or the world or kind of whatever just sort of that kind of thing I know that's not a career choice I know it's not I'm not sort of career I think something like that's that like, like I wouldn't mind like if I had a year off maybe one day I'm not saying I want that because I love what's going on but if I ever had a year off I think I'd like to become someone who's just making up as they go along maybe find a like cash and hand job that kind of thing <laughs> is there anywhere in particular that you really want to travel to oh see I've, I've, uh, there's places I want to go back to I'd like to go back to the states and see more of the states I'd love that and places like Italy like I've been in love with Italy mm. and like a lot of Europe and stuff um, I'd love to go to Asia like I'd love to go to like maybe Japan and stuff like that and do all that sort of Bali, Vietnam all that kind of thing I'd love to go to those sort of places just everywhere I think I'd like to go everywhere at some point really um, yeah. But yeah yeah so I guess yeah okay. everywhere <laughs> the whole globe <laughs> There was one video that you ended up doing with Taylor from Fifty Shades of Tay. Yeah, I yeah, I've got love Taylor. I went, yeah, I yeah. went and watched his video, so so that way I can kind of either get some questions that you know were different, or something that if it was a question that I had that he also asked, then I could change it in a way to help expand your answer yeah. a little bit more. So you mentioned in that video that you had quite the visceral reaction to the cheese grater in the Evil Dead Rise. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What do you think is like the best weapon used in a horror film of like any horror film? Any horror film. Oh, wow. These are such good questions.
questions. They're really good questions. Oh my god, that's um let me think about that. Let me think. There's so many good weapons that have been used. I'm thinking the horror film that I've watched. I mean, the cheese grate is definitely up there. That's that's definitely hundred yeah. percent up there. I would say oh that's so hard. That is that's really, really hard. Uh, what's yours? Have you got one? I'm trying to think. If I'm gonna go like super, super classic, I would probably yeah. say like Freddy's glove. I know, yeah, I mean they yeah. I was thinking that, but I thought is it too generic to say that? Because I mean it's an amazing weapon, isn't it? It is, and it's it's very yeah. iconic. You see any like everyone basically has a knife nowadays. No one has yeah. knife fingers except yeah, for yeah. Freddy. Otherwise, honestly, I think my new favorite, and it's it's nothing like out of the park or anything, but just in the trailer for Blood and Honey 2, the flaming chainsaw is pretty flaming cool. Flaming chain is cool, isn't it cool? <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, that's gotta be I think once the film's out, that'll be up there with like best weapons used yeah. by like horror characters. But can we say like body parts? Because there's something I love about like Pennywise's teeth when he I know I know that's it's not fair. technically a weapon because it's part of his body, but it's obviously he uses his body to kill, doesn't he? Just his teeth yeah. and stuff. There's something about it when his eyes roll back yeah. and then he comes like he's all this that smiley clown with the goofy teeth and then it goes and then all of a sudden he's just got these like monster teeth. There's something about those teeth. And I remember the first time watching that in cinema and I was like, that was the coolest thing ever. And he grabs his arm and his eyes just go back. Yeah. And then comes this like absolute predator. I know it's not technically <laughs> a weapon, but just that, like his use of his own, you know, mouth and like, how he changes it. I think I remember being like, that's that's cool. Very cool. But yeah, Freddy's glove is just everything about Freddy's glove is just cool. It's just sexy, I think. It's maybe that's not the right word. Maybe that's not the right word. But Jimmy's just going down the wall and it's all spotlight. Yes. Like, oh, all that kind of stuff. Oh, that gives you goosebumps. Like I I just yeah. recently watched watched them just last year, like all of them. Like I've only yeah, seen yeah, yeah, like yeah. some films from that franchise like here and there, but I had never seen any of the other ones before. So it was like a first yeah. time watch of the whole series and I just instantly fell in love with the yeah, whole yeah. franchise. It's so good, yeah. So I would say, yeah, pretty much his teeth, but they're not technically a weapon. I would say they're a weapon. Yeah, his use of his teeth, I think is cool. I love yeah. it, I love it. His eyes roll back and he becomes that demon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is the funniest thing Thing that has happened to you during a shoot or performance. So it can either be film or theater. Oh God, um, that's so good. Oh my God, these are really good questions. So the funniest thing is, what? oh God, that's such a good question. Oh my God, these are really hard. <laughs> um, I would say there was, I think there was one show I did. This is going back to drama school, this is. There's one show I did and there's this whole thing about, so basically I played this character and I was meant to, I'm meant to try and like, I was trying to pull this girl basically in this, in this show and I'm, and I've got this whole plan. So it's a very, it's um, the Bow Stratagem show. And I'm supposed to come on and I show a portrait of myself. And there's this whole monologue I have about myself having this portrait of me. I'm meant to leave it on the ground for this girl for her to come across, stumble across it. And she looks and goes, oh, wow, that kind of thing. I remember I walked on stage and I forgot the prop. And then I was like, I remember panicking and being like, you need to make this work. Like, you need to make this work. And then I remember talking about, oh, I'm going to leave this portrait here and blah, 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 blah. I never had the portrait on me and I left it backstage. And I think, I don't know how, I think I made it work. I think I walked off stage. I think someone just sort of slid it on the stage for the next scene for her. But literally, how I made it work, I don't know. But obviously, they don't know what I'm talking about, the audience. So there's yeah. that whole thing. Like, I was, yeah, the whole thing about me and my own picture and how I'm going to leave it for this girl. So she stumbles across that mental picture. So, like, that's the beauty of stage, though, is like in that time, you like, forget a prop or something, you just got to go with it. And like, you got to live in the moment completely. Um, but with film, obviously, it's just take two, you know? <laughs> that was a moment. Maybe it's not even funny. Maybe it's just best. I remember walking on stage and be like, oh my God, I've forgotten. Like, literally, the vital prop of this scene, I forgot it. <laughs> that was a moment. I remember that. That was bad. I asked this to because last month I ended up sitting down and chatting with Joseph Greenwood who's going to be in Bambi the Reckoning. Oh wow, oh, wow yeah. So the next two questions I ended up asking him I find they are there's something that can kind of really bring out and focus in on who you are as a person I think. Um, yeah. So if your acting career has ever had a theme song what do you think it would be? Oh wow, these are the best questions ever. This is <laughs> these questions are so good. They're so good. They really make me think. So I want to. I don't want to just throw away answers for this kind of thing. Yeah. Um. I would say so. My acting career has been a bit of a funny one so far. So I worked at the Globe doing Shakespeare. I've done a commercial recently, but it's all improv, it's like therapy sort of thing. And I played like this comedy character. Then I played Tigger. They're all sort of mental characters. Like when I was at the Globe, it was a lot of stage combat. I had two swords. Globe fighting on two swords. This kind of thing. Um. The guy I played in the commercial was like they wanted all my 
I tapped out because he was like this guy who's like the pulse guy and he just had blah blah. Uh, Tig is completely insane. Like, you know, he's just completely like, no, doesn't hold back at all. So I would say my song so far, and also bear in mind I did stage combat at drama school as well, so it was just fighting for three years on stage and on film and that. I'd say Master of Puppets by Metallica. So <laughs> I'd say just some yeah. crazy long, it's been a long journey so, so far. I mean, with the drama school and stuff, crazy long song. Uh, and it sort of has like bits where it slows down, bits where it speeds up in the song. So I'd say Master of Puppets by Metallica would be my theme song for my acting career so far. Maybe it'll change, maybe it'll get more chilled out, or even more crazy, maybe Slipknot area. But now, <laughs> but now it's but now it's Master of Puppets by Metallica, I'd say. <laughs> and then our final warm up question before we get into yeah. everything is Is there any actor or director, past or present, that you would have loved to collaborate with? Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Any actor, I'm going to say, confidently going to say, Heath Ledger, I'm going to say. I mean, just what he did with the Joker. I know like, a lot of people love him and a lot of people say Heath Ledger, but it just it, there's a reason why everyone sort of says it. Mm -hmm. Because just what he did with the Joker, just I, if I could be in a room with him whilst he was sort of, maybe even with that character, when he was like sort of, because he method acted. And obviously, if you listen to the interviews of the other the other actors, Aaron Eckhart, he said he would like take an hour to walk around the space and like mumbling and grumbling to himself to get in that, into that mindset. And just to see that happening, to be in the scene with someone who's doing that, and to see the magic sort of unfolding in front of you, Mm -hmm. off and on camera um, I think that would be special so yeah obviously I know he's sadly passed away back in 2008 now isn't it um, if I could work with anyone past or present yeah I'd say if I could work with Heath Ledger and like I'm saying I think that would be awesome probably magical yeah so. yeah I think that was like the peak of his yeah. entire career and I mean like the yeah. one film that um, came after that was the um, Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus I think it was yeah yeah where they got um, Johnny like Depp Colin uh, Farrell uh, Jude Law Jude I think Law. yeah yeah, yeah. And they're all just like yeah. seamlessly intertwined, all the actors. It was like brilliant. And I don't know if it's true. I never really actually looked too far into it. But from what I had heard, the other three, because they were so close with him, they just took on the role, didn't do any, like any money that they got. They ended up donating it to like charity and family. Like they oh, got wow. nothing from the film. I need, to, I need to watch that. I've not actually watched it. That's bad. I've seen clips. It's seen clips. so good. I've seen the behind, the, I've watched all the behind the scenes of it on YouTube. <laughs> I've not actually watched the film itself. So I need to actually sit down and watch that because I've heard it's really like something, something special. When you get free time, that's your homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll let you know what I think. All right. So now that we're all loosened up, let's yeah. really dive in. So what ultimately attracted you to this particular script. So I got the role before I got the script. So I was already like so excited for just the project itself because just because of the character. Mm. So I remember I was, at, I was at the Globe at the time doing my first like acting job. And um, I think it was like maybe a week or two into that, into rehearsals. And I got an email from my agent saying, I've put you forward for this role or something like, do you want me to put you forward for this role? I got this character breakdown and it said, obviously Tigger, it said Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Me too. And I heard of the first one. I didn't watch it, but I heard of it. And it said, um, it was like the scary villain opposite Winnie the Pooh. It's off memory. So it said someplace, and he said, um, said heavy prosthetics, uh, over six foot, like muscular build. Said inspirations is like Pennywise, Freddy Krueger, Art the Clown, and all these characters like heroes to me in the whole world. I've always like I'm obsessed. I've got Pennywise tattooed. Like, I'm obsessed with Pennywise. Uh, love Freddy Krueger. I love Art the Clown. Um, so I was like, this is like it felt like made for me this this role. And people have always called me Tigger as well. Like I keep saying this, but it's true. Like all my life, I've had all sorts of people call me that like, compare me to Tigger because I'm quite a jittery person. I'm quite quick, like thinking and talking and stuff. So people tell you like to go because it's a lot. Um, so I was like, this, this is made for me. This is like it's my favorite childhood character. I get compared to all the time. My favorite horror icons mixed together. Mm. And I've always said, if you ask anyone who I've known since 2017, ever since I watched the first It or the first remake of It that came out, I've always said, oh my god, if I could work in prosthetics, like that'd be a dream because it's, as an actor, you fully immerse yourself, you know. Yeah. So when I that was what drew me to it was the, the character breakdown, and I was like, this is. So I said to my agent, please, please, please put me forward. Um, and then I actually got the script about two weeks after I got the role. Like, didn't send me the script yet they kind of were talking more about the character and what they want from the character then the producer eventually sent me the script um, but I was already like so I didn't even look at the script at all and I was so up for it already it was the character that actually drew me to the okay. project yeah so you mentioned that you know Pennywise Freddy Krueger they're big mm -hmm. inspirations for this character yeah. how does it feel taking on such an iconic role as Tigger that have been inspired by these two horror icons 
yeah, what that sort of the pressure of it sort of thing. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah, it definitely there is a certain level of pressure to it. As much as I love it and I've had a lot of fun with it, I do think people love the first film already. There's already that fan base there. And yeah. Wanted, and in, and Tigger was like the one character, like even when I first got the role, I looked into the first one and everyone was saying, oh, where's Tigger? Where's Tigger? Why is he not in it? Because obviously he wasn't in part of the main. Mm. It seemed like he was the one that was most sought after. And the director said that. He was like, this is the one that everyone keeps saying. Because he was their favourite in the cartoon. But, like, yeah. oh, we want to see him in the in the horror version. So it felt like there was already a lot. There was a lot of weight on his shoulders of like, you want to be well fans. And then also because the director was like, oh, this is like our Freddy Krueger and our world and our Art the Clown and Pennywise. He like also trying to impress, you know, them people. I mean, there's a lot sort of to deal with. But I just loved it though. I absolutely loved it. And I feel like it could it can be more of a dream. Like I feel like I've always sort of quoted Freddy Krueger and Pennywise. I love these sort of characters. So when like you've got a character that's like meant to be, you know, their inspiration for this this character, then you're like, well, it's a, it's a dream for me. So I had just so much fun with it. So how would you describe without using Pennywise art and Freddy? How would yeah. you describe oh, this version first time of Monday? Tigger? So it's quite interesting. So I sort of just watched the film and absolutely loved it. Like, so I'm still on cloud nine. I'm still buzzing. And this is what is it, now Thursday. I'm still buzzing from it. Um, but it kind of it, it, seeing. I obviously haven't seen anything with Pooh and Piglet and Owl. So seeing them guys and seeing my character prepared like in the same film, mm -hmm. I've got a different sort of uh, thing of the character, different like, idea of it. So before I thought he was like the outcast and he was the one that was like the misfit of the group and um, because he sort of kept away from the group. I didn't have any scenes with the other characters. I'm not to spoil it, but that is not a lot of the other characters that's sort of doing his own thing. I feel like he sort of kept away and pushed away until he gets out and it's like, oh, he's out now and that's a rampage. But after watching the film, I, I honestly feel like it's quite funny. I feel like the other three are like a little family and then Tig is like the mad dog. Like I actually feel like, that, like he is like the dog of this group of like just the, the crazy dog that they keep in the den and it's like a bit, eventually he's off the leash and he's going crazy. That's how it feels. Okay. Um, but he's also so just arrogant and cocky with everything he does, like making little comments all the time and that kind of thing. And obviously, I don't know if you've seen the clip that's now on YouTube, but he's... Um, Where he's like stalking? Uh, yeah, when he's stalking her and obviously calling her a bitch and all this kind of thing. Like, that kind of, <laughs> yeah. He's that sort of like sadistic, jokey character. And he is just ready to go all the time. Like you'll never catch you on a day off. Like, I remember when I got the role, the producer said to me, imagine like he's on 50 Red Bulls at once. Like, he's always on 50 Red Bulls. He's always good to go. He's shaking, he's vibrating, he's twitching. He's just always ready to pounce. And he's just 24 seven looking for blood. And that's what Tigger is. That's the best way I think I can describe him. Just insane, pure, pure insanity. And that's that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think yeah. that's what everyone is going to like really, I guess, hope for from this character too, is just balls to the wall, just all out insanity and just that's go for it. it. There's no holding back. There's no holding <laughs> back to this character. With the, obviously the inspiration, the original inspiration of the cartoon, were there any yeah. nuances and like traits or anything from that version that you managed to kind of squeak in or merge together with this version? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, just the fact that he's obviously like the, the high point of the group, isn't he? Like he's a lot for the other characters. He's meant to be the one that's so jumpy and like he's almost annoying to the other guys. And obviously like, I tried not to steer too far from the costume because this is where it all started. So obviously I tried to take all the inspiration from horror people. But also, yeah, keep it sort of grounded and keep, you know, elements of the cartoon version there. So yeah, the fact that he's very hyper, uh, the fact that he's too much for the other characters he's like that in the cartoon mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he leaps he doesn't bounce a lot of people have asked me do you bounce on your tail because <laughs> that's what I did no I don't bounce on my tail I know some people <laughs> wanted that but I think it could, that would maybe be too comedic I think you can sort of bounce on his tail there's a lot of leaping I'm on the ceilings I'm on the walls I'm jumping here I'm all over the shop but you'll never catch him so like that the leaping element to him the bouncy element and the fact that he is just non-stop hyper um, and obviously but this time ready to kill as well <laughs> I mean I feel like uh, as goofy as it would be I feel like if there ends up being a third one and Tigger is in it and everything, I think yeah. there should be one sequence where, and you know, hopefully you end up reprising yeah. the role as Tigger. I hope that there would be like a scene where you could use your tail and bounce to in yeah. order to kill someone. I think that would be hilarious, but also just add so much fun to yeah. that film and sequence and everything too. Definitely. I do think there yeah, could be yeah, in future films. I think there's definitely room for. <laughs> and plus the guys that are doing this like recent Scott, they're just geniuses. Like They'll do it in a way that it's not funny. Like, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll be able to work it out. To me, I'm like, I can't picture anywhere it's not going to be funny. But I know they would work out a way in which it's like, actually scary whether it's just I don't know I don't know maybe it's just slow bouncing or something but I think it would be cool if there's a sequence where he's just bouncing towards a victim yeah. maybe in the next film maybe in the next one that'd be cool yeah <laughs> like you mentioned we ended up getting to see that new little clip online where you're stalking a person crawling on the ground and it sounds like you're using like an American accent yeah was that like 
fully like you going like that deep or is it like augmented as well um yeah it's distorted so it's sort of very similar to what i did with freddy krueger's voice so it's quite interesting with the voice because i remember talking to reese before i even got on set back in august and we were saying about his voice it's a big thing of the character he wants him to talk a lot and uh, we sort of had ideas i send him voice notes and stuff so on the first day on set i got there and we said right let's just try out some stuff so we, i thought american could be a good choice anyway and then we tried out um english like an english just like, whether it's like london or whatever sort of thing Jackson. and it just didn't work it just did not work i don't know why maybe it's not scary um i don't know i don't know it just it didn't feel right and we were trying out sort of more of a london and more of a like just all these like grungy english accents and it just didn't fit the character so then i went brandy went hello like that and then he went oh he was like that works that's actually really because that was the net the line i was doing all that hello christopher it was. Yeah. um and he went, he went oh that works that works so then we did that and i remember recorded like a load of lines and stuff like that and then i obviously didn't know how it was going to sound and then deeper or not and then he want, he then sent me back like a clip of me talking I was like that sounds so good and I did say like how how's that happened and I think it's the same thing they did with the Robert England voice I think they just sort of just slightly deepen it and it kind of slows it down I think that kind of thing like distorting it so it is it is my voice but it's yeah it's definitely been, I can't go that deep um, yeah <laughs> But no, yeah, so I think it sounds great what they've done with it. Yeah, as soon as I heard it, I was like, okay, it sounds like it could be augmented and it was definitely giving like very Freddy vibes. That was the immediate, immediate recollection that I got. But no, I tried to go, I went as deep as I can. Robert England, the way he did it, he sort of pinched at the back of his throat. So I was doing like voice things, keep it there, keep it more chest. So I'm not like, you know, damaging your throat and stuff. So did that and then he played around with it and then came out with that. So yeah. Oh, it sounds great. So so I'm excited yeah, to like you. see thank everything kind of take shape in uh, yeah. a week actually here. So, so. Is it? Yeah, it's a week. Yeah, 26, yeah. isn't it? Wow. You mentioned that this was your first time being in prosthetics. Yeah. What was the process like? And did you feel like a full transformation in demeanor when the application yeah. was done? You were just like, all right, it's showtime. Let's do this. Yeah, 100% completely. Like a few people have asked me like, how how was the process of getting into prosthetics? I know some people hate it. But I keep saying, I really appreciated the time. Like it's sort of, I'm quite a jokey person. So I sort of got on set and I remember talking to like the producer and like some of the cast and that and having a bit of a having a bit of a laugh and then someone would go right Lewis we need you in makeup now so then you sit down and like we're getting for like 6 p.m until about 8 p.m you're in makeup so it's a couple hours and that time I really appreciated those two hours because it was like transitioning like you said from Lewis to Tigger and like the makeup team is this couple they're just wonderful what they do they would sort of we'd be talking a bit and a bit of a laugh but they were sort of you know focusing on what they're doing and putting everything together and I would just sit there and I was like sipping monster energy and um, I used heavy metal music a lot for this character to get into that mindset and I remember sort of sitting there and actually sort of had all these tunes I was listening to for like the month before I'd be like playing all these tunes in my head uh, and really getting into that mindset of Tigger and then it was like yeah, I keep saying this but it was almost like Darth Vader at the end of Revenge of the Sith when he's sort of getting his mask on and it felt like that so you sort of get this hood over you there's a chin piece a forehead piece and the last bit they put on is like this this part of the face it cuts like this area like the eye holes and stuff and you see it coming towards you and they sort of glue it on and it's all stuck to your face and then you're like right now like you said it's like it's showtime now and uh, and it's, it's amazing for an actor just to be fully immersed like to look in the mirror and just completely gone and just to look at your hands and these tiger hands with these claws and stuff it really immerses you in this character and I, I heard Eddie McKenzie plays Piglet set on an interview the other day and it does it does something to you when you're in prosthetics and there's the smoke machines and there's the blood and there's the darkness and the light everything everything really does something to you and um, it helps so much more with your performance so yeah I really appreciate the time in, in the yeah. Awesome. That's actually like, it's very interesting to know just like how it completely changes the mindset yeah. and just allows you to fully immerse yourself into the character and, you know, help bring, I guess, the best performance that you can give to that character yeah. at the time. Oh, God. Yeah, definitely. Like, normally, I on any other set in between takes, I like to have a bit of a laugh and joke with everyone. With Tigger, I was like, I had a few people ask me, you're right, because I would sort of go away from like, they'd be changing like camera angles or doing this or doing whatever. I was sort of just sat there or standing there on my own, just sort of looking at the floor or staying in that mindset. I remember the director going, you right, Lewis? Is everything okay? And, I, and I'd, I'd be loving it. Like inside, I'm happy as anything. Like, I'm loving every second. I'm like, yeah, mate, mate, I'm loving it. But I'm just sort of staying in that in that mindset, just not trying to lose it while I've, while I've got there. Yeah. So we know with lower budget films that they, you tend to use a lot of practical effects because it's a much cheaper way to get something done. Like with the first yeah. film, with only using, you know, $50,000. It was very heavy on the practical effects, which I fully support. I love practical effects. And mm -hmm. CGI I love, but you know, if it's done correctly, this film does use some CGI, like for your tail, for example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how is it working with 
the CGI aspect of your character. So it's interesting about the tail. So I didn't know I was getting a tail until like the last day on set. So I didn't know about this tail at all. It wasn't really spoke about. Maybe they knew about it, but I just didn't. Maybe I just wasn't told. So I remember it did like a couple of days on set. And I remember my last day, the producer said, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to give you a tail. And I was like, oh, what? And I was like, but like, I haven't thought about it. Maybe I would have like moved different with it. But I think actually, when you see like big cats and dogs and stuff, they, they never, there's no sort of, you know, they don't think about mm. it. They don't really use it anyway. So like, actually, it make it work. So I remember seeing, so then I remember them mentioning it and thinking, oh, that's cool. And then about two weeks before the trailer came out, the director sent me a picture of this tail. And I was like, oh my God. But I never saw it in action. I didn't see it moving or anything. So the first time I actually saw it moving and in action was the trailer. So mm. I remember people texting me, like fans and friends and stuff, being like, oh my God, your tail. And I was like, oh my God, I know. Like I was just <laughs> excited to see this tail moving around in this trailer. But yeah, I had no sort of, didn't even think about it really when I was filming. And I guess it doesn't really matter because it's just kind of there. It's doing its own thing behind me. Mm. Uh, so I love it. Like I, I keep looking at it and I'm so excited just as excited as the fans to see the tail on me. Yeah. See, like the first time that I saw the trailer, I noticed the tail, but I didn't even notice that it was CGI or anything. Like, yeah. That's how well done, like even only having a million dollars to use, they yeah. put the money exactly where it needed to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it was even at the budget. The budget was lower than that, I think. It was even lower. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know the exact number, but I know I think it was lower than that. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. But, uh, really, these guys have really done well with the money they had. It's amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, a few people said that. A few people said, oh, is that practical effects of tail? Like, nice, complete CGI. Like, I had no idea it was there. That's how good it is. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of the tail. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned before that you've done a bit with theater performance with the likes of Game of Thrones, Peaky Blinders, yeah. The Bow Stratagem. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I did my research. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting nervous now. <laughs> how did you find the differences when working on a movie set compared to doing theater performances? I was just saying this yesterday to a few of my friends because obviously just watched the Winnie premiere or watched the film at the Winnie premiere. And I've never been so nervous for anything in my life. Like I was, I was sat next to my girlfriend and she was saying to me, I don't want to put her hand here. And, she was like, and my heart was like G -g 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 the whole way until the movie finished. And I don't think I'd be like that because I'm not one of those actors. Like, I quite like watching myself in movie because I think it's important. Some actors I know can't stand it. Yeah. But I think you can learn from it. I know it's very critical. Sometimes you can be very critical with yourself. But sometimes you can look at that and oh, I'll change that next time or that. You know, you learn stuff. But with stage, it's that great thing of like, if you mess up on stage or if something doesn't go well, you get off that stage and people forget about it. I mean, people just like, people aren't gonna remember it forever. You can't ever see that again. That's that, that, ha that moment has happened now, it's past. But with a film, I was kind of, I was at the red carpet, had a few interviews and stuff, and I was fine, I'm fine. Until we got into like the lobby of like the, the cinema where you get the popcorn and stuff, I was like, oh, I'm actually really nervous because I thought this is out there forever now. So if I'm not happy with what I've done, I knew the movie would be fantastic, but if mm -hmm. I wasn't happy with what I'd done, it's that thing of like, that's out there forever now. Like, that exists no matter what, you can't take that movie away. So I was so, ner I've never been more nervous, and I actually didn't think I'd be like that. And once the movie ended, I kind of went, oh, my body just relaxed. But I was still but I was so happy like I literally it could not have gone any better like I feel like it was perfect and I'm very happy with the final product but I remember being so so that's that's the biggest difference I've noticed is like actually I always thought my nerves would be more you know present for the stage but I'd be way more nervous for the stage I'm actually more nervous for the final product of a film it's, it's, yeah. it's weird I know it's like for example Johnny Depp who doesn't watch himself at all uh, like some of these actors don't ever watch themselves they can't stand it I was like that's so weird and now I've done this big feature film I'm like oh, I get it now I get it like, um, so I'm very new to that side of it still maybe I'm learning new things about myself um, <laughs> I can't <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I I feel like I'm kind of the same as you. Yeah. It's like, you know, editing all these types of videos and everything. I'm constantly looking at myself, reacting to, okay, how did I do this? How can I make it better the next time? How can the editing look better? And I'm just, I'm constantly analyzing every little tiny detail that I'm doing in yeah. these videos. So, I, And it's exhausting, isn't it? Like it, yeah. you, it, it eats you up from the inside out and you need to learn. Like I'm really learning stuff to just throw it away and just you learn you learn we're human so no matter what mistakes you make you're human you're moving on you're trying to do better yeah that's it. we are our like worst that. critics oh, like, yeah exactly you can get started now people would think you're great like i've watched i think you've done fantastic at this interview so far do you know what i mean, <laughs> I mean but you might watch it back and you might go oh actually that's or then like how i said do you know what i mean and it's so yeah. unfair on yourself so i think we need to learn people to be like just, you know, appreciate yourself a bit more. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I really appreciate that you think I'm doing a yeah, decent job great. at least because like, you're literally the third person I've ever interviewed, so. <laughs> a third, oh wow, really? Yeah. You're doing fantastic, no, honestly. Thank the you. questions are throwing me off. Like the ones, the warm up questions, <laughs> my my career soundtrack and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my God, this is deep, deep thinking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I try and go for some things that like not many people will typically ask because yeah. ev everyone always answers the exact same question. So it's like, why? It's gonna get boring. Yeah. No one wants to do the same interview over and over over and over again. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. Yeah, no, that'd be great, it'd be great. Thank you. So you mentioned with 
your theater performance, you did some stage combat. Yes. I, I assume that because there was, like with Tigger, it ended up being such a physical role, you brought some of that over into your preparations and everything? Yeah, yeah, completely. So I remember when I, so obviously Reese kind of wanted me to audition for the role and he texted me on Instagram, I was saying, we're getting self tips in for Tigger, we please have one of them for you. So I sent my self tape in, he went great. And then after that, he actually said, oh, I saw you do stage combat, can we see some stage combat clips? So I sent in, I've got loads of footage and stuff of me farming like the swords and different weaponry and unarmed and knife guns, everything. So I sent the whole lot in. And I think it was more, I think he wanted that as more of like a see how my body moves sort of thing. Because like, that's what I was saying, there's less sort of fighting in this film. It's more sort of, um, without giving too much away, it's sort of just Tigger just ripping through people. Do you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. There's less like, I'm not taking hits. I'm more just giving the hits Um, so far anyway. Maybe in future movies, there'll be like enemies or, you know, the villain sort of thing for the fight. But obviously I think it matters with stage trauma because it is a dance at the end of the day. It's all got to be safe. And obviously I'm not actually, you know, taking people's eyes out and stuff like that. Like it's all fake. Um, you'd be glad to hear. But that kind of thing. So it's all a dance and you obviously you want everyone to be safe and you sort of moving in, in the tune of each other's body. So there's definitely, so stage combat helps so much. And like little stunty things as well. Like I'm jumping off things, I'm doing this and doing that. And I did stage combat, you also learn like balls and jump, like mm -hmm. stunty stuff, like side of things as well. So yeah, 100% helps so much with this character. And I'm really like, I didn't want anyone like helping out as well. I wanted to do everything myself, like the voice, the, the character, the stunts, everything. So I'm glad that it's still just still me. <laughs> that was actually going to be part of like my next yeah, spin off yeah. of that was if you did your own stunts and sounds like you did. <laughs> yeah, I did my own stunts. Yeah, yeah, proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned before about your tattoos and everything and how you have Pennywise. You've got like quite a lot of horror themed tattoos and yes. the Grim yeah. Reaper that you said was your favorite, I believe. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Do you remember what your first tattoo was that you got? And then what was your most recent? My first one was, so I've got the snake here. It's actually my biggest tattoo. So I turned 18. I've always been obsessed with tattoos since I was like maybe 12 years old. I'm like, I want to get covered. And that was my first one. But I remember, I think my dad bought it because I was like 18, didn't have any money 18 years old. And I think my dad was like, I know, as much as he didn't want me to get tattoos, he was like, I know you're going to get a tattoo. So I'd rather pay for your first one. So you can mm. save a bit of money and that kind of thing. And I was like, all oh, right, you can pay for it. So me being me, I picked up the biggest one in the book. And I was like, I want a big <laughs> snake. And there's a, there's a movie character I really like who's got a snake tattoo. Uh, so I sort of copied him. A lot of my tattoos are actually like ones inspired by other like movie characters and stuff they've got. Mm -hmm. So he, I remember he was like my favorite character at the time in this film. So he had a snake. So I was like, I want a snake. But I've got a few, my most recent ones, I've got a Viking one in my chest. And I've got, this one means a lot to me. This one was only done last year. I've got a star. I've got that done in Portugal with a lot of my family. Uh, that one means a lot to me. Cause like my mum and my nan and stuff hate all my tattoos. And they always said they'd never get one. And then we went out to Portugal on a family holiday. Uh, and we all got one. We all, about 12 of us all got a tattoo and we all got the star matching. So it meant a lot of like, I won. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've got like a Viking one on my chest there, like it sort of goes up here, it's sort of, um, I've got like some Viking ones down there and stuff like that. But I haven't had, I've kind of slowed down, I kind of, uh, when I first turned 18, I, I went crazy for like a couple of years and tattoos, it's every like couple of months I was getting one. Uh, I don't know why, but you sort of get, you get bored. Maybe not everyone, but I got a bit bored, I feel like I'm sort of bored of getting tattoos now. They maybe, is that a worrying thing? I don't know, I don't regret them, happy with how they are, but I'm, at the moment I'm not, I used to be upset. Maybe I'm moving on to like other things. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, like, I've got like eight myself, and I'm. I already, have you? Yeah, I already have like plans to get, get like a whole mess load more. Like, this entire arm is all like oh, Tim Tim wow, tattoos. Look at them. Oh, they're amazing. And then it's like, I've got like Beetlejuice, oh, Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. Oh my God, I love that. So it's all just going to be like a that Tim Burton. Portrait. Is, that, is that a portrait of Batman? Oh my yeah. God. Specifically the Michael Keaton one. Wow. Is that your favorite one? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, I think he's yeah. he's probably the best iteration in my opinion, but like this whole arm is all just like Tim Burton stuff. So oh, I have like, see. So I have oh, like see. eventually once I can afford it, I have like three more that are supposed to go on it, which is going to be like the Cheshire Cat Wednesday from the show. Yeah. And then I wanted to get the Corpse Bride as well. Oh wow, yeah, that'd be cool. And then yeah. I'm going to do like a full like color sleeve on this one of all just like Disney villains. Oh yeah. And then you I want... <laughs> Maybe I might have to now. Have you, have you got that? Oh my God, love you forever. <laughs> Although I might put him down where I'm gonna put like my actual horror themed ones because I'm gonna get like my legs done so that way when I wear short it's all just gonna be like calves and shins area so I've already got like all of them planned out but I might have to after seeing the movie I might have to switch it up a little bit. See what you think of the character and if you like the character if you get a tattoo on you oh my god that would be the best yeah send me send me pictures do that yeah <laughs> well, I'll come um, out and see it in person. <laughs> speaking of Tigger tattoos you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that you were possibly going to get one. Yeah yeah. You haven't yet? I haven't 
haven't yet. No, when I literally first got the role, I remember when I got it back in in July, I literally remember saying to myself, which is such a thing, why my brain went to that straight away? I was like, I'm gonna get a ticket tattoo. Straight away, I wanna get one. Uh, and I haven't yet, because I've just been so busy. And like, like I said, I haven't even get tattooed the last year or so. So but I feel like I need to. And I said to Tay, I don't know how it came up, but then we said how we were so looking into getting one. And then a fan, oh, where is it? I can't. So a fan did, this is it. Like, a, I absolutely love this. He did like a portrait of my face and see if it focuses on that. It's like half my face, half Tigger's face. And I love it. I absolutely fell in love with it. So I feel like if I was going to get a Tigger tattoo, that would be top of the list right now. Like my own face and then maybe Tigger. But yeah, but like I said to Tay, I'm up for fans sort of sending ideas in. I think I, instead of me just picking my own, I'd love it if like a fan designed. Um, so I'm going to leave it for a while and just see. Let's see if anything can top that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it, it will. I reckon it will happen. Yeah. I don't know when, but I reckon it Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Maybe you might beat me to it or someone might beat me to it. I don't know if people like the character. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just have to find the time and the funds to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they hurt as well, so there's that. So you got to yeah. work up the courage. Yeah, <laughs> you got to work up the courage to go back. In there. And yet, I still want more. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's an addiction, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> was there like any process to in order to like cover them up, or was it just throw on the jacket and you're done? So there was so obviously the prosthetics come down to about here on your chest anyway, so they cover just in case because I'm in like a straight jacket, which I love. I love the straight jacket. I wear for the character, uh, and that sort of is a bit undone here. So just in case there's any sort of like see down there. That's why they covered that. Uh, and then the gloves I'm wearing come up to about here on your arm. So there's no sort of worry of like the sleeve coming up and seeing any skin. Because the idea is like what you see, that's yeah. his body, obviously. And I think it's just, just kind of filling in that illusion. Um, so yeah, it was just, yeah, whack the jacket on and he's sort of in a long sleeve jacket anyway. So there's no sort of tattoos, it's not really a problem, to be honest. It's funny, isn't it? you sort of worry about tattoos and, you know, being able to get up and stuff. Then you're playing like a guy who's covering, or a killer tiger man who's covering prosthetics. So there's like no worry at all. <laughs> okay. Okay, so then, as you said, a lot of your tattoos are very much horror themed. And I know this is a mean question because I don't even like having this question asked, but do you have a favorite horror film or franchise? Oh, right, what a horror film or franchise? Oh God, that's another good question. Uh, see, I always loved, so so the 2017 It was always my favorite. Just because what Bill Scott's got to do with Pennywise, I think it's just amazing. But like, I've said this a bit recently, but I've, I'm obsessed, I'm really obsessed with Evil Dead Rise. I think Evil Dead Rise, just the possessed mum, what she did was just like, just genius and like there was she was just completely completely insane even Pennywise was like obviously he had moments of like more he, I mean he is insane let's, let's face it but like she was just like screaming like that bit in the in the whole sort of bit she's just screaming and just everything it's just so so unpredictable you don't know what she's gonna do next that idea I, I love that I'm obsessed with that kind of character so yeah I'd say it 2017 or Evil Dead Rise would be my top two but then I love like Nightmare on Elm Street I even love like, the 2010 version like I love that film I know it's quite controversial I know some people don't want version I love it. That's probably my top five. There's just so many. If I had to say, if I had to say one, I'd say it. 2017. Just, just. I'm, I remember watching it in cinemas back when it first came out and just being in love with. That like, changed me. <laughs> like, just being in love with what Scars got. What he did with that character, even that first scene, he's talking to Georgie. I remember just being like, wow, well, that's that's acting. That's amazing. Yeah. What's yours? What's your favorite one? It's like it always fluctuates. Like I've always been a fan of Halloween, mm -hmm. but again, like with that franchise, I haven't actually watched all of them. I've watched like I think all of the ones that have Jamie Lee Curtis in it, aside from Resurrection, because just no. <laughs> Scream, I think, might yeah. be my ultimate favorite franchise. Yeah, I mean, I've got a ghost face tattoo as well, too, so I do love Scream. Uh, <laughs> see, that that's one of the ones that I'm going to be getting eventually. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I got one, and it healed a bit bad. It's just a very traditional-looking ghost face mask. On a random flash day tattoo, like Halloween <laughs> sale. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but I love Ghostface, love it, and okay. Scream Six as well, especially. But otherwise, like other than Scream, I would probably say The Conjuring. I think. That's, okay, that's probably yeah, one yeah. of the ones that I like quote the most just right, out of yeah. nowhere. That's, that's a good analogy. That's a good like way of saying what's your favorite horror film because I quote Pennywise all the time yeah. and I quote Freddy Krueger all the time. Like, <laughs> I was getting, uh, my friends, especially 2010, some of his lines and that, when he's like, I was this fruit away dream. That bit, I just fucking, <laughs> oh, that line. When he said, I don't know if you remember that line. When he's saying it down the hallway, I remember being like, what a line. Stuff like that. I just, I walk around my house and I'm like, send it to my dog. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He really makes him a freak. But yeah, and, yeah, it's a good actually way of thinking about it. what do you quote the most exactly i feel i feel like that's probably the the number one 
telltale way to know what your favorite horror film is or just film yeah, in general yeah. is what do you i coach star wars all the time and i love star wars so there's that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so then comparing blood and honey 2 to your favorite types of horror films how would you say that this film fits in with the horror genre oh what guy like, comparing it to other films would you say mm -hmm. oh, that's a really good question um after watching it it is just the film is just wild it is crazy in all the best ways like it's just non-stop chaos and stuff throughout and i said this before i watched the film i like saying I feel like this is what it will be and it is exactly that like it is just wild it's crazy uh, it's bonkers but in the best way and it feels if I had to say a vibe it feels a lot like sort of Terrifier I'd say Terrifier 2 that kind of thing even though obviously Terrifier has only got one killer and obviously this has got what four in this one but it's that idea of you know it's just Terrifier it's always topping it it's always like with Art the Clown he's, it seems like he's always topping kills it's always oh my god that's crazy I can't even just did that and the next kill is even more crazy it's like, oh my god I can't even just did that and it gets more and more insane as it goes on it feels like that and like stuff you just can't even think of, of ways of killing people it's that kind of thing and uh, this film feels like that like it feels like terrifying especially you start terrified too but it's just constant like topping people to get more and more and more crazy as you go on in terms of the gore as well so that's i'd pretty compare it to yeah i'd say that 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 same sort of vibe awesome. crazy if it if it's on the same kind of level as terrifier 2 i'm already immediately sold because that one between the two i mean like i love the first one but the second one was just perfection yeah. if and you love terrified 2 yeah you'll love this film trust me yeah. awesome <laughs> I am yeah, sold. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm like I already have my tickets already. I was sold already from the everything just as soon as i heard that there was going to be a sequel to the first film i was just like okay i need to get tickets yeah. i need it i said it's it before but this is literally the first film but on steroids that's what i keep saying it really is like, the first film was more picking people off one by one like singular kills but this yeah. one is just it is just constant death the whole way throughout just, <laughs> blood and guts, all the, just destruction the whole way throughout it's crazy but i love it i was like Honestly, I was just in love with them. Yeah, awesome. just the stuff. Oh, everyone, the whole cast, everyone's just amazing in it. Cannot wait. Yeah. Let me know what you uh, think. So how would you describe the overall theme or message, if there even is one, from Blood and Honey 2? Mess if you're going to get like sort of deep with the film, <laughs> I would say it's a lot of like, the theme is pretty like abandonment. You know what I mean? Like people leaving people behind um, and what that can do to people. Abandonment issues, I guess, maybe. Yeah, it, it, It's that idea of like humans doing what humans, like Marcus said it recently. I heard him say it. Okay plays out and it was like the way he said it was beautiful he said it a lot better than I'm going to say it but like the idea like humans sort of leaving people behind or leaving creatures behind or whatever and just and not thinking about their actions and what that can lead to and that kind of thing and then it biting you in the ass and obviously that's what, it's, that's what the theme of this film is of like Christopher Robin sort of going off and doing his, his human things and leaving his old friends behind and this is what's happened because of that but I'd say the whole theme is just crazy as well just like insanity as well obviously there's that whole insanity side of it and there is that also that side of like loss and leaving people and just betray I'd say they're not the things of the film as well. Were there any particular scenes, moments, behind the scenes experiences that you found deeply resonated with you or that you found were particularly memorable? So there's, oh, uh, there's one, I know I've mentioned this kill a lot to people, but there's one, there, there is this one kill and it like this, I mean, this is now talking after the film. So this is not my first interview after the film. And obviously all my other interviews were before and I was saying, I think this kill is going to be great because like, I remember how it wasn't set. Now I've watched it, it was just exactly what I wanted it to be. It was just perfect. There's this one kill where I'm doing something horrid to someone. I'm literally, he's he's in a shower of blood. And on camera, it looks so good. Like in the film, it looks so good. He's literally in a shower of blood. I won't say what he's doing to this person. It's horrid. He's doing something to him. And I just remember, so I, even now, when I close my eyes, I can see it so clearly. I remember when I killed this person and did what I did to them. I remember walking away from that from that take and people, even the makeup team that are doing all the blood and the guts and stuff, looking at me like, I remember their fa I remember their faces so clearly. Everyone was like, "Okay, that was disturbing." Like the other kills were great; they were all fantastic. <laughs> but it was more of a process sort of thing. It's more like that was great. Like next take, next kill. Do you know what I mean? So we're moving on. But that was the one where I remember everyone sort of just stopped for a second, and it was like, "Okay, that was that was crazy. That was disturbing." And even I kind of came away from it. And I was like, "Yeah, no, that was uh, that was special." Do you know what I mean? That's one. That's one <laughs> kill I had. Where I look back and I think, "Yeah, that's something to that really sell in film." And it did. And I watched it, and I was just as happy as I thought it would be. Do you think like everyone around you had? the same kind of reaction i think so yeah because a uh, premiere i never knew this it was my first like, big premiere but i didn't know people shout out stuff i thought it'd be like a cinema experience people were shouting stuff and people screaming and people were loving it and and it was just i was sat there kind of like, uh, looking at it and hearing everyone around me going what 
like <laughs> uh, and I was loving it I was like yeah this, this is obviously what you want and yeah. it's not just to that kill but to all the kills like they're all crazy I'm not trying to just out that one like, they're all mental so yeah it's a good, good reaction to it so now that the film is complete it's out you've seen it how are you reflecting on your character's journey and involvement in the film so oh, he's gen like I said earlier to feel, I just feel like I've seen him in a whole different light now seeing the other character if that makes sense like mm -hmm. I had this idea that he was the misfit and he was sort of not treated badly but like he wasn't really thought about just as much as the other characters they're more tight with each other and he wasn't uh, now seeing the film I think less that I think it's more like he is the crazy mad dog of this of this insane family and they're like this this tight little group and they're all sort of looking out for each other and they know they've got quite the humans and they're looking after themselves mm -hmm. and I'm that one that's sort of um, once he's out it's like right like sort of desperate times desperate measures sort of thing you know let's 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 use Tigger um, the mad dog that's how, that's how I feel about the character now I feel like and I love it and I think but there, there could be so much more of him I think so if there were to be a sequel or even a spinoff like how they did with the cartoon where they made the Tigger movie would yeah. you want to reprise your role as Tigger and take on oh, like yeah. even like a solo project of strictly based around Tigger yes 100% thousand percent yeah there's already I can confirm that Tigger will be back for future films okay. that's all I can that's all I can say uh, and I've been told that like I've been that's, I can't say titles of films I can't say anything like the project name or anything like that I can confirm he will be back for future films uh, and the minute I heard that I was just like buzzing I was like just ready to go straight away like I, like I've said it really is I think it's quite rare as an actor to you find your dream role and this is like my dream role just because of every everything to go with the character really like the cartoon he was my favorite cartoon character the inspiration the look the the vibe the prosthetic everything is like my dream role so for me I'll jump at any opportunity to ever play this character again I'll jump it all. yeah he's coming back so it's all good awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so speaking of future films uh, I don't know if you've been told and obviously I know you can't say so just a simple yes or a simple no, it's fine. The Blood and Honey Twitter or X account mentioned that on March 22nd, they are announcing their next film within the Twisted Childhood universe. Have you been told what it is? I know what it is, yeah, I do okay. know. Uh, okay. <laughs> I know, I know, I know what it is, and I can't wait for people to find out. This is that one film, like all the other films are so special, like, they're all great. This is the one film I know it will blow fans' minds away. Like once they know what this project will be, I just know people will be blown. It's, it's, it's crazy, it's absolutely crazy being the best. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yes, um, sorry. No. <laughs> you tell I'm excited, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you could do another film that has like the same or similar requirements that you went through to portray Tigger, what film would you love to be in, be it like a sequel or a remake? Any film ever. Ever. I would love to be, and I, obviously straight away I jumped on this, I would love to be in another Batman film playing the Joker. That would be, if I could play the Joker at some point in my career, I would, I would die a happy man. I would, yeah. If it was like I've said it, anything like if it's a cartoon or do the voice or if it uh live action film or if it's a series or a video game if i could jump at any project that's like batman orientated me or just a whatever sort of thing in that in that world and there's a new version of the joker i'd love to play yeah a new version of the joker that'd be my dream do you have a favorite line that you've said in the film do you know it's got probably the one in that clip i'm not just saying that because obviously i don't want to give away any more lines obviously mm. but like i'm honestly hand on my heart i reckon it's that that line <laughs> yeah, bunch of gold, bitch. i think that one's got to be the uh, my favorite like, I remember when they, they quoted it on X and before that clip came out I remember they like texting some of the crew and the producers up saying like oh my god they released that line and that's my favorite line and they were like yeah same that kind of thing so uh, already before the clip came out I was like that's my favorite line so I'd say that one it's just so sadistic because obviously her eyes have been ripped out going towards uh, death basically uh, and I'm just just having a joke along the way <laughs> <laughs> do you have any other projects be it film or theater that are coming up in the near future that you are excited for I do I do have a project I can't say anything. It's really annoying. I've actually just signed an NDA for something, okay. which means I can't say anything. It's very exciting, and it's uh, yeah. I, I, I literally can't say anything. Are you able to say if it's like a theater or? Is it like film? Oh, I don't think I can. I literally, okay. I mean, I'm on very strict instruction. Not okay. to say anything. Obviously, I can't wait for like future stuff with this universe. Obviously, that's like, I can't wait for that. Like when I heard like, just the fact that I can confirm he's coming back, it's great for me. And, but there was this other thing happening. Um, and I, I, I'm sorry. I would love to tell you. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't <laughs> say anything. I guess, I guess we'll find out when we can. <laughs> yeah, 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 once, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so on the next interview, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you hoping that audiences are going to take away from this film? This film. So I just, 
think people need to appreciate the first film, I think, and realise that this film has happened because of the first film. I think, because I think there's no way people won't love this film. I think this film is just crazy and I love it. It's just, it, I thought it was just perfect. I'm like, the masterpiece for me. And, and I feel like people are going to love it because it is just that, if you're a horror fan, you'll guys like, that, that Terrified 2 sort of vibe, which is insane. I think that can only happen because of the first film, but the first film built that foundation and, you know, it, it introduced you to this universe of creators and these characters and the thing they're going for. So I think people need to, will come away from this film loving it and then appreciate the first one and think we needed that. I'll show this again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Oh my god. Oh, god. Sorry, <laughs> should I say that again? Did I finish? You did. Yeah, yeah. I heard I heard the whole thing. Oh, right. Yeah, can you edit it with a little freezing bit out? Can you? I mean, if you want to say it again while you're moving. Like, I heard the whole thing was heard. It's just your oh, your right. picture would be frozen. So, if like, if you don't... Yeah. The frozen... I don't mind. I don't okay. mind being like... <laughs> oh, I, was talking, yeah. I, I, I can keep it as frozen if you want to do a retake of it. Yeah, yeah keep it. If you can hear what I'm saying, that's all right. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, here's our final question, which might be slightly difficult for you to answer because I know there's going to be many different ways that you could do it. But what are three words, only three, that you would use to describe this film? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's good. These are really good questions today. Um, To describe, I'd say, oh, loss, betrayal, and insanity. So I'd say loss, okay. yeah, betrayal, insanity. That's what I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Three well, things, I'd say, of this, of this film. Everyone is able to catch Lewis as Tigger in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, coming out March 26th. Tickets are on sale right now so anyone yep. can go and grab them so thank you so much for sitting down chatting with me about the next installment into the twisted childhood universe where okay. is everyone able to follow you to stay up to date on this project and future projects to come so i'd say instagram is definitely the best thing i'm quite active on instagram so it's at lewisanta.actor on instagram i'm sure you're probably leaving in the description or whatever x I've just started x i'm very bad at it i'm trying to post more on that because i know some people use it a lot i am on that as well as at Lewis Santa x i think it is obviously on imdb that kind of thing if you want to check it out some other projects coming up and stuff like that yeah instagram is the best way if you want to get like message me or anything like that or whatever instagram i'm very active on instagram so yeah well thank you so much again for thank sitting you. down and having a little chat and talking about the wonderful film that you've been in and i yeah. cannot wait to see it next week i'm so crazy excited. you're gonna love it you're gonna love it <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time i loved it honestly the question being so good so yeah thank you, thank you. <laughs> really appreciate it appreciate it cheers cheers See ya. So hopefully you enjoyed this interview. If you did, make sure you give it a like. Again, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and hit that notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video because if you don't, how else are you gonna know? You won't, so do it. Make sure you give Lewis a follow on all of his social media, keeping up to date on what his future projects will be and what he's getting up to. Go get your tickets to see Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. By the sounds of it, it sounds absolutely amazing. I already have my tickets. I've had them for about a week now. So I'm excited to go and see this film, especially now knowing that it is very much like Terrifier 2. So that gives me a lot of hope. I really enjoyed the first one with how fun it was. This one, I'm I'm so excited for the insanity that's about to unfold. Again, a huge thank you to Lewis for sitting down and chatting with me. I look forward to keeping in touch and sharing my thoughts with you about what I think about the film and your performance and hopefully getting to see more of you in future projects to come. But that is all for today's video. I will see everyone on the next one, but until then, goodbye friendships.